There's a sutta we chant often, the Garuniya Metta Sutta. And most often we focus on the metta, the goodwill. And it's easy to see why, because so much of the sutta is composed of expressions of goodwill. But the Garuniya is also important. What is to be done? In other words, the practice of metta is not floating without context. It has a context of actions, and the actions are incumbent on us if we, as the Buddha said, are skilled in aims and appreciate the state of peace. In other words, we appreciate that the true goal is expressed in the Third Noble Truth, the ending of passion for our craving, and as a result, the end of suffering. This is where we aim, if we're skilled in aims. So there's a lot more to be done than simply spreading thoughts of goodwill. At the very end of this sutta, or toward the end, the Buddha says that we have to be determined on this mindfulness. In other words, you keep goodwill for all beings, including yourself in mind. And it's something you do with determination. And you may remember that determination has four qualities. And they're expressed in the sutta. The four qualities are discernment, truth, generosity, and calm. The discernment, of course, is expressed in our realization of what the true aims are, the most skillful aim, trying to put an end to suffering. And this gives a context to the practice of metta. It also helps us with the content of metta as well. In terms of the context, we realize that if we really have goodwill for others, we have to behave in ways that are consistent with goodwill. And our goodwill for others should be expressed not simply with the idea, may all beings be happy at heart, which the sutta says several times, but also says, may they not despise one another or wish one another ill. In other words, you remember that other beings are going to be happy not because you wish them to be happy, but because they act in ways that lead to true happiness. They too should develop thoughts of goodwill. That's your wish for them. So that's the content of metta. As for the context, you want to behave in ways that are consistent with being truthful in your goodwill. You have thoughts of goodwill, whether you're sitting, standing, walking, or lying down, as the Sutta says. And your behavior has to be in, in harmony with thoughts of goodwill. This is where we get into the issue of generosity. You think thoughts of goodwill to other beings, not because you think they deserve it. but because it's part of your following the path. And you give goodwill freely, without any conditions. This means you're going to have to put up with a lot of other beings. Think of that image that the Buddha gives in another sutta. The bandits sort of pinned you down and are sawing you into little pieces with a two-handled saw. He says, even in cases like that, you should have goodwill for them. In fact, that's where you start with goodwill focused on them. And of course, you're doing this both for them and for yourself, because you realize if you were to die at that moment, you wouldn't want to die with ill will for them. The desire for justice, the desire for revenge in cases like that would lead to another miserable life. Whereas if you can have thoughts of goodwill, even though they may not seem to deserve goodwill, you benefit. It helps you to rise above this situation. So your death is not a narrow and confining and downward-heading one. And then there's the element of calm. As the Sutta says, you live with peaceful faculties. In other words, you exercise restraint over your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And you're engaged with the world. You look at the world not with the eyes of anger or the eyes of greed. You listen to the world, not the ears of anger or the ears of greed. 
how about you don't rile up defilements in the way you engage with the world. And that allows you to be content, santusika, supero, living lightly. You're content with just enough to practice. You don't have to struggle with anyone to get things better than they are. And it's a lot easier to have goodwill for others and a lot easier to live in a way that expresses that goodwill when you can be content with your material possessions. And toward the end, this is not taken with views. In other words, the kinds of views that would get you into arguments, the views about the nature of the world, who created the world, was the world created, was it not created? We see so much of conflict around these issues, because views don't just sit there and stay in cafes where people argue them. They get into the world, and then when they're affected by people's greed, it can take them all over the place, lead to all kinds of clashes, all kinds of conflict. So you're not taken with views, but you are consummate in vision, in other words, you see clearly what's going on in your mind. This is where being calm leads back to discernment. You see the real issues are not out there. The real issues are in here. And so you're not trying to fight anyone off to gain your little square inch of territory here in the world. You're willing to give up your claims in the world. So you can focus on where the real problems are, and the real problems are inside. This is how you have goodwill for yourself. And in this way, the Buddha says, you never come back to a human womb. This is one of the best things we can do for the world, because you see there's so many people, and there's so much greed. And when you come back, you have to feed. And it's hard not to let that need to feed lead to greed. And that will lead to more conflict. But if you can live in such a way, think in such a way, act in such a way, speak in such a way, that you don't have to come back, that's a genuine gift. One less mouth in the feeding chain. When you think in these ways, this is how you think about the world in line with that phrase, appreciating the state of peace. You really appreciate what the Buddha had to say that this is the best thing that people can do, put an end to suffering by following the Eightfold Path, and being determined on that path with discernment and truthfulness and generosity and calm. That's the context for goodwill. And it also gives you an idea of what the content of goodwill should be what it truly means to wish yourself well, what it truly means to wish others well, where we all find that state of peace.